Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask BR. My name is Ronak and I'm one of the founders of Fully Filmy, a pop culture store that celebrates everything you love and we're really excited to partner up with Film Companion South just for you. So what you guys do is in every episode you guys send in some amazing questions and BR answers them for you. But we thought we could take it a little notch higher. We wanted to reward you for your curiosity. So here's the deal. In every episode of Ask BR, the top 3 questions will win free t-shirts and goodies from fullyfilmy.in. So yeah, stay curious and cheers. Thank you for that Ranak and uh, stay tuned everyone to our social media handles to know who the winners of the top 3 prizes are from Fully Filmy. Uh, so let's begin the Ask VR on Jagamay Tandram. The first question comes from PK2404. He says, I would like to say that the best shot in the movie would have to be in the second half during the pre-climax portion, where on hearing the open firing, the kid instinctively hides under the bed. Even with the dialogues, the shot was powerful. KS movies usually have so many powerful shots. Why do you think JT lacked in that aspect? Was it the writing or was it the premise? not explore to the fullest uh, i don't know if by shot you mean the cinematography or just the 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 fact that such a thing happened and therefore the the way it was staged but i found the flamboyance that kartik subraj usually brings to a movie that was pretty much there i mean i i don't think that was lacking here uh but like he said in this recent deep focus uh probably taking away a lot of the like it looks like they shot a hell of a lot and then cut away and cut away and cut away and and therefore we were left with a very a kind of a generic film so i think that's probably why you know we missed the the connective tissue that binds it and brings it to an emotion but i personally i'm not a fan of these kinds of shots because you know the kid going and hiding under the bed because of the plain sound because they kind of reiterate just something that just come before so it's a little obvious and uh, you know i'd rather have something you know i'm remembering that shot in jigar tanda for instance where uh, Uh, or even in Ravi when when you know when when everybody goes into the rain uh, you know there's such a feeling of all the women you know they they are they are like at the rain at the end and uh, you get this feeling of them being cleansed of all the filth that their men have dumped on them you know uh, without telling a word um, i personally like those kartik subraj shots better the next question comes from abhijay shankar mr b r do you think films that are shot abroad which delve a little into foreign culture very rarely or even never connect with tamil audience vivegam junga now jt have failed why do you think this happens with jt i don't know if it's failed because it's on 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 a netflix platform it's been sold for a record price and i think it's getting a lot of views it's still on the top 10 uh, so i don't know about failure uh, but maybe you're talking about reception i don't know see i don't know how the theatrical version would have worked out uh, because i mean uh, are you talking about whether it is a uh, you know with the with the dialogues have been dubbed in uh, in english or uh, in tamil into tamil the the peter characters dialogues or would they have just kept it there in which case there would have been a huge amount of alienation for uh, the audiences that do not know english now there's a difference when they see a dubbed english movie because they let's say they're watching a james bond movie or or like fast and furious that's one of those you know spider man whatever it is they dub it in all languages right that from start to finish they are aware that they're watching a movie that is a foreign movie that is dubbed in tamil just for them to understand but here this is a little different and i don't know if it would have worked uh, as well with the audience because i have a feeling that you know what they call nativity factor uh, i don't think it's 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 100% necessary but the non nativity factor definitely i think sometimes takes away from a film and it adds to a, a bit of distance unless you're talking about you know the films that bollywood makes you know which exclusively for the multiplex like let's say dil chahta which started it all it's a very cool movie it's set in all kinds of places it i mean like many of us don't have a connect with these characters but because we've seen hollywood films and we've seen you know people like these we kind of connect with them even though uh, you know they're not really speak you know speaking our language or whatever it is but with tamil films you don't have that culture at all and i think that could be the bigger problem the next question comes from narendra kumandan Uh, do you think Karthik Subraj has completely transitioned, keeping his eccentricity intact into the commercial space after being smitten by the commercial success of Peter? Previously, used to find a middle ground between art and commercial cinema in varying degrees. I don't think Karthik Subraj ever did art cinema, but uh, the success of Peter, uh, he says that he actually had the script around the time of Iravi. So I don't think it was the success of Peter. But yes, when you bring a bring a big hero into a movie, 
there are certain things that you have to do to service the fans of the hero and uh, no director can escape that. Now, when you're looking at something at Jigga Tanda, you're talking about Siddharth and uh, Bobby Simmer. They are people whose images can still be, you know, kind of, uh, you know, fooled around with. You can tamper with it. But to Danush's credit, I must say that that somebody playing a mercenary for about two thirds of the film and then changing, um, I think now maybe heroes are ready, at least some heroes are ready to kind of change for the sake of, uh, uh, for the screenplay. But, uh, and actually, even in Peter, Rajini plays someone that he rarely ever plays, someone who just kills, you know, like, uh, for example, during that, that wonderful flashback sequence uh, where we have Sachikuma and all those people, he just takes a bloody shotgun and shoots the guy down thinking that he's going to make trouble later on. And uh, that's a kind of Rajini that you don't usually see, you know, somebody who just likes to kill and is known to kind of be that kind of trigger happy. So Karthik Subaraj takes these stars and he does manage to infuse an amount of evil or what you want to call a little bit of, you know, badness in them. So I think, I think he does manage to do that pretty well. As to whether he has come completely come into the commercial space i would say not yet because there is still this is not by any means a totally commercial film this is still a fairly layered film i mean at least in concept it is still a fairly layered film though in execution because there was so much taken away it looks like i mean that's what everybody's saying right it's like a very generic film though i don't know why so many people seem to hate it so much uh, i mean i i was underwhelmed sure because it's very generic but at no point did I find this an unwatchable film, uh, you know, because you, when you expect a film from one of the major directors, you kind of, you know, expect the moon from them. And when, you know, when you get this, you're kind of, your kind of feelings go around a bit. But I don't think by any way, uh, he has kind of left what was originally Karthik Subraj about him. Uh, I think he's still trying to carry that over in some sense. But I think the real point is that when you mix a genre film and an issue film, I think that mix doesn't quite work. Uh, it's a because you know you're trying the issue part is a very serious thing, the genre part is a very pulpy thing, and when you're trying to bring those two together, I think there's always going to be a problem. Sri Krishna Raman says we have seen the incorporation of Raja songs, Madurai specific gangster portions in a lot of KS movies like Beta and JT. Has this become a gimmick rather than signature element like voiceovers for Gautam movies? What does this aspect work for? I like the voiceovers in Gautam movies. I love the voiceovers in Any Noki Paim Thought. I was one of the three people who liked that. Uh, but yeah, you know, I don't know. He likes to have these, these signature elements and there's nothing wrong. They're not distracting, right? I mean, it's, it's just... Uh, uh, it's a song playing in a car. Kaldana Male is a song playing in a car. Uh, just because we know now that Karthik Subraj does like to do it, it doesn't mean that it's not valid or, or that such a thing is not you know, going to be there. I mean, I think it's okay. Highly recommend by AP says, I see some people taking offense about the movie not being serious enough about a sensitive topic. Can we compare and contrast it with the Inglourious Pastors of Django and change both sensitive issues? And an insanely fun way, which is what Jagame was trying to do. I don't know if Jagame was trying to do that, but I don't think serious topics always need to be handled in a uh, sensitive way. Uh, the two examples you took are great examples of films that, that had an insane amount of fun with topics like, you know, the Holocaust or racism. When I say fun, I don't mean haha kind of fun, though that was also there to an extent. But the point is, there from start to finish, the director is in that pulp mode. He is not trying to become serious about it at all. He is in that pulp mode from start to finish. Here, Karthik Subraj wants to have it both ways. And I think that might be the problem. He wants to be in that pulp mode in the, for example, in the 360 degree shot, that the rotating shot where, you know, we find uh, this gangster being murdered. But he also wants to have this bill being passed, which is a very real life thing. Uh, and which kind of, you know, needs to be a thing. So I think, I think if the whole thing had been in a pulp mode, I think the film would have really worked like gangbusters. But because it's kind of part serious and suddenly you're seeing some Sri Lanka flashback and all, we are brought back to real life from that pulp world, which, which would have been brilliant. Like Quentin Tarantino never does that. He keeps his stuff in the pulp world. He doesn't drag us into the real world at all. It's a complete pulp world from start to finish. So that's why those two films work like that. This one kind of wants to have that pulp world, but kind of also go there. And I think that's where the problem lies. Making short film says, is JT one of the problems? I felt the relationships 
was between Suruli and Attila. I didn't understand how to accept the fact that when she narrates to Suruli, how she was related to Shivdas and how great the person becomes one of the major reason for the character change in Suruli. I felt there was no depth at all in the relationship. Yeah, I, I too felt that there was no depth in the relationship. And I found the cuts really strange. Like it's not cut. I mean, it, it's it's obviously not the editors. It probably they 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 had a scene in between or something like that. But in that park scene, uh, first of all, I didn't understand why. You know, if she wants to, uh, you know, have him assassinated, why would they agree to have a date in a in a public park with so many people out there? That was a bit strange to me. But yeah, okay, I mean, everything doesn't have to have a logic. But okay, so this guy is pumped full of bullets and he falls into the river and die, and is like going to be die dead. She rescues him, brings him home, and the next scene she's injecting something like poison into his, you know, that bag and. And I'm like, okay, so if that she's, I mean, the idea is clear that she's confused because on, on the one hand, her love for him is there, which again is not shown really, we are meant to take it as granted because I think again, those scenes were cut. But even if we assume that the love the love is there and she's confused between her love for him and her love for uh, her, you know, her people and, and what she has stood for and all those kinds of things, that's too extreme. Like you're just jumping from one scene where, you know, she rescues him to the next scene where she's trying to kill him. And, and, and uh, yeah, the character doesn't work at all because it's like she's just kind of a uh, thing. I also felt the same thing about the Kaleris and character. You know, your your big boss, you're almost like your fatherly figure. You're, he's been murdered. And uh, you're, there's no scene, uh, immediate friction with, with Dhanush, you know. There's like, that's the kind of thing that needs a longer time to develop, which is why I think I, I, I always feel that Kartik Subaraj would be great at making mini series, you know, where he lets all these elements play out instead of having to cut them to two and a half hours for a movie's uh, length, where you end up sacrificing coherence sometimes for, you know, just the length. Manda Badra Mama says, would the emotional core of the movie have worked to the more linear screenplay or even a chaptered flow like the intro? Since the movie went ahead with Suli's POV, the scenes that impacted him were not impactful for the audience as such. I think the emotional core would have worked had had I think the pieces that Karthik said he cut out from the movie been there like so we would have had a clean uh, you know a progression of a plot uh, I don't think there's anything more to that I don't think uh, the the, the non-linear stuff I don't think you know is a problem uh, and besides there isn't much of the non-linear stuff anyway but yeah but the emotional core of the movie as such I think I think got diluted because Karthik tried to do two things. One is he was trying to show Suruli and uh, the Sri Lankans, right? That relationship. He's also trying to show uh, a, a white supremacist do his own thing. So it's like the the film gets divided between these two uh, ends of, of kind of a thing. Whereas I feel that if it had just been the Shivadas gang and Peter had been reduced as a character and 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 his main thing is to make the Shivadas and Suruli play off against each other, I think we would have gotten a more emotionally impactful movie. VPV1988 says, I feel Tamil films have not managed to integrate Western actors set in foreign countries. Has there been a Tamil film which has integrated foreign actors seamlessly into its plot? Well, Jagamit Tandram, I thought that Peter Ga was like pretty good and I really liked his dialogues, yeah? He was not uh, bad at all. Uh, Lagan was another movie that oh, Tamil films you're asking about. Yeah, that's a, I don't I'm not, I'm not able to uh, think of too many Tamil films that did that because they always pick some bad actors and uh, yeah, I don't I don't uh, foreign actors especially. But I thought the Peter guy here was pretty good. Without wax, as is this the case of the writer and the director in KS clashing? Former wanted to weave a larger issue into the screenplay, why the latter got carried away with the Tarantino Ritchie homages. See, first of all, I don't think Karthik Subaraj wants to do Tarantino Ritchie homages. He genuinely thinks in a pulp way. I don't think it's a, it's a, like he's saying, ah, this is my tribute to uh, these directors. I don't think that's happening at all. Uh, but more than that, I don't think it's a writer and the director clashing. I think it's the it's the writer himself wanting to do a lot and when when as a director you're also the writer you're kind of writing a lot and then you're finding out that the timing is kind of you've overshot the timing and then you're kind of trying to reduce it 
And I think that's where the problem comes rather than the writer, the director clashing. And like I said, there isn't a problem at all with weaving a larger issue into a, a Tarantino sensibility. We just talked about that. It's just that this film did not stick to one zone as such. And Karthik wanted it that way. He explained that he his color scheme for this was different, his color scheme for that different. But I think this kind of thing you is best done when entirely set in a very pulp fiction world uh, rather than trying to bring it into the real world. Venkatesh and Raman asked, do you think the climax would have been more satisfying if the antagonist would have been killed like in Karthik's last movie? And what does the last dialogue of Surli meant is that he's going to be back in London and become a of refugees. I think what Karthik wanted to show is basically, uh, I mean, there's no, I think it's obvious that, that, you know, like you're, you're, you mean, you think that you're the, you know, this lord, lordly race and even you are nothing without papers because, you know, the papers what defines you. I think it's a, it's a strong point. And again, that scene has a very pulp sensibility, right? It's it's like, I mean, like imagine going all the way from, from London to wherever and, and kind of landing up there. And had the movie had that sensibility throughout, I think that film, that, that scene would have worked like amazingly well because the whole movie is a bit tongue in cheek, right? But then the serious stuff that comes before it, that's the thing that kind of derails it. Vishnu says, I felt Iravi was KS's best in writing and maintaining a coherent and consistent screenplay for a feature film. Peter was middling and JT is below average. What explained this apparent decline as KS reaches peak or is it involving a different writer? Your thoughts? Yeah, Jagmeet Andram and Peter were kind of, you know, generic kind of films. Though I did enjoy the second half of Peter a lot more. But I also think this may be the result of somebody trying to find a new language. Uh, of 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 trying to milk like I keep saying this over and over, but but trying to get his own pulp sensibility into a, a kind of uh, a real issue zone, because in Iravi, for instance, is probably the straight the first straight drama that he did. Uh, even there, the way S J Surya acts, you know, there is that lovely pulp sensibility. There is that lovely bit of exaggeration. That 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 kind of thing that really makes him. Uh, kind of a great, great character. So I don't know if this is a decline as such. I mean, we're just talking about two films. I think, uh, and I did enjoy Mercury a lot. I, I think the problem comes when uh, you're handing a big star and suddenly you discover that you have a deadline and you have you can't write a screenplay at your own pace, but you kind of now have to look at the dates of the stars that is available. And I think this is the root cause for a lot of, not just Kartik Subaraj, but uh, I'm thinking that this is this is the root cause for a lot of directors because you know you have to finish a screenplay and then look for your casting. Instead, this happens the other way around, where you kind of uh, an actor is booked and then you kind of uh, write something. Uh, you know, you keep writing and and uh, you know are you you probably are not able to do justice to your screenplay because you booked the actor. Rahul Bharadwaj says, do you think the same concept of mother gangster becoming a big shot abroad would have worked better if it just focused on how this intelligent protagonist manipulates the gangsters in London and take away their empire instead of touching these social issues? <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, would it have worked better without these social issues? I don't know. I, I'm not sure that a Madure gangster going and con like 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 conquering uh, these English gangsters appeals to me as a movie. So I don't know. I don't know if that just that line alone ap appeals to me uh, uh, kind of a thing because uh, it's a little. I mean, I'm not I'm not able to imagine a tone the tonality of such a movie, you know, because uh, would it be like a like a like an action kind of film, a fun film. Uh, I don't know what it is, so I'm not able to figure that out. But yeah, a lot of people seem to have some problem with the social issues. I think that's something that that we have to keep asking our Tamil filmmakers is that why do they feel the need to uh, to kind of talk about an issue in a film? For example, I thought Mercury was a really, really good way of talking about an issue because there were certain people who were, uh, you know, who were uh, personally affected by mercury contamination. But the film was not about some something except for some cards at the end. The whole film was nothing about that at all. It was just about, it was a pure genre story. 
And that's what really works, right? It's like the story should be there. I don't know that there are too many issue movies that work with big heroes. Like I said, I keep saying, I keep mentioning Parir and Permal as one of the best uh, issue based movies I've seen. And that's because with Kadir, with an actor like Kadir, you can do whatever you want. You can be very true to what the thing is. Whereas when the scope grows, uh, you know, when you have a Danusha, when you have a, a Surya, whenever you have, you know, the, the bigger actors, uh, it just, you know, you, you're forced to do certain things for the fan pleasing. But again, I'm also thinking of what Kartik would have done had Jagame originally itself been a Netflix movie and not a theatrical release, the kind of stuff that he might have done. That would have been very interesting because I think when a, ca when a creator thinks very distinctly and when he's forced to also grapple with the fact that I have to please the audience, there's always that bridge that needs to be crossed and not all directors cross that bridge easily. Vini Tapu asks a very interesting question. He says, should contemporary Tamil directors, including Karthik Subbarat, start working with different writers like most Malayalam film directors? Uh, while the craft is good, writing ability seems to be deteriorating. More than deteriorating, I think a level of sameness creeps in. Uh, you know, because, you know, you're kind of, you know, however much you kind of, uh, uh, I mean, yes, part of it is the voice, but... But even if you take Hitchcock, for instance, he always worked with writers. His voice came through through his direction, not, not necessarily his writing. So when the same person is writing and directing, maybe you'll get three, four, five interesting films. But after the sixth, you kind of start feeling the, the bit of sameness. Unless you're really going to, uh, especially if somebody's doing gangster films or, you know, like a particular genre of films all, all over. So I think I think that, that, that might be a, I mean, I, I definitely do think that writers are needed. I definitely do think a lot of Tamil directors should learn that it is not some ego issue if you are not credited as the as the writer because by default the director is a co-screenwriter because there is no screenwriter in the world who just goes and gives a bound script and says here take it and direct this. The director is always going to have inputs in the writing. So after every scene, he's going to say, this doesn't work for me, this works for me, this works for me, whatever, this doesn't work for me. So whoever the director is, they are in fact a default screenwriter. So I don't know why, maybe, but they want that, that thing with them that it's written and directed by so-and-so. So, so I think that, that's what ends up with them. But in Malayalam, they have no ego about this. They're like very happy to let you do the writing, I'll do the directing. And, and you know, they just, they look about the, the quality of the, of the film as a whole. And I think that's why, uh, you know, the movies end up because direction and writing are not necessarily compatible strengths. I mean, one could be a great writer and a great, uh, not so great director or vice versa. And, uh, you know, I think that's that writers are desperately needed. But more importantly, we need directors to understand that a separate writer is not some kind of like a loss of face or something like that. It's actually a good thing. Suri Naranen says, I can't digest, digest the fact that Suruli was being pitched in an appraisal meeting. It was so sketchy. Did K.S. struggle to introduce Suruli's journey to London organically? If you've seen the deep focus, there was a lot cut there. There was the bigger Madurai portion there and there was a lot cut there. And even in London, there was a lot cut. So I think maybe some of this might be there as well. Vishwa Karthik says, many people are not fine with Suruli's transformation and say that he could remain this unapologetic gangster. But I think the transformation arc is fine. But it wasn't organic. The transformation of Setu and Jigar Danda was organic and gradual, whereas in JT it took just one flashback. That's exactly it. See, the thing is, in Jigar Danda, it's gradual. See, I think, uh, you know, the interval point, of course, Karthik is going to disagree with me, but I think the interval point should be Dhanush realizing that, oh my God, I've really screwed up. And then the second half should be the redemption because redemption takes a long time. Because first there is the mental adjustment and then there is the act actions that you do in order to uh, kind of a thing. So if Shivadas had been killed, let's say 20 minutes before the interval and then Aishwarya tells him, look, you've killed this great man and this is what he actually was and he represented to us. And something happens there that at least gets him thinking. Even if he's not reforming immediately, he realizes that this guy is not the villain that he thought Shivadas was, that he was actually a good guy. And something gets him ticking. Maybe he's taken to a refugee street or whatever it is. I think the interval point should have been Danush realizing that, oh my God, I think for the first time in my career, I screwed up because I killed somebody that was actually doing so much good and then the second half becomes his redemption arc 
of, of kind of a thing. But instead, Karthik said he wanted the interval point to show Dhanush's speak of villainy because he's kind of done that betrayal. Uh, but yeah, but that was his choice. And for me, it did kind of work very well because because of that, 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 that interval point, you had to really hurry through the redemption arc. And the whole film became very generic. Uh, that was actually my only problem with the movie, that it is so generic. I mean, like I said, it's a... It's a watchable film, but the writing is so generic that 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 you kind of don't get involved when people die, for instance. You know, you want to when somebody dies, an important person dies, you want to feel for them. Uh, but if they're not written well, you're not going to feel for them. Or if scenes are chopped off, you're not going to feel for them. That's the problem. Jonathan Emmanuel George says, I personally love the film. Barring the intro scene and the appraisal scene, the movie seemed flawless. Shreya, Santosh, Jojo and Dhanush were the show stealers. Are there negative reviews due to missing the theatre experience which is working against the film? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, think, I don't think there is any difference at all in uh, theatre viewing and uh, home viewing. And let me tell you why. There is the obvious difference of you having a bigger experience in a theater. And in the case of, let's say, horror or comedy, that are two genres that are specifically designed to work with a community in the sense that, you know, sometimes, you know, watching other people laugh makes you laugh as well. Or watching other people get scared, like suddenly the person next to you gets scared or jumps in the seat, you kind of, it passes on. So it's like a, it's a true communal experience. But when other, other genres are considered, many other genres are considered, there is no real difference in the emotional aspect of, uh, of a movie that will change. For example, let me take Lawrence of Arabia, right? When you see it in a theatre, you're obviously going to be blown away because of the visuals are going to be so much magnificent. But the emotional core of the movie is going to be the same even if you see it on your phone. That won't change at all. So the way you feel for the characters, that is the same in whatever medium you see the movie in. That is never going to change. The only thing that will change is the scale and the sound and all those kinds of things. But the emotional core will never change whether you're watching it in a theater or not. So all the people complaining that I'm happy that the film worked for you, but all the people complaining are not complaining because they didn't see it in a theater. Uh, they're complaining because they didn't connect with the film. And with that, we come to the end of this Ask VR session. It's a, it's a kind of a you know a mixed bag of 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 questions that we got, and I think I think everybody's still trying to grapple with the fact that this is not a lazily written film in the whole sense, but there is something going on. See, it's like uh, how do I put it? There are some films that that try to do something, and you can see where it's going, but it's not happening. But from the deep focus interview that I just did with Karthik, I got the feeling that it was not a lazily written film. It was more a film that was overwritten. And then when they started chopping it off and chopping it off and chopping it off, we were left with something very generic. Uh, is the idea that I got. I, mean, I, I don't know what really happened behind the scenes. But anyway, thank you all for your questions. And do stay tuned to our social media handles to know who the winner of the prizes that Ronak Mangatel is going to offer. Thank you so much and keep watching Film Company South. <laughs>